let's now walk through what you are saying across social media. Well, Bukola is here uh, to join me as we walk through uh, the trends this morning. Bukola. Yeah. Some of the things being said on social media today, you know, really a reflection of disappointment as at what should have been, uh, but what has uh, been cut short. Well, we hope temporarily, and I'm talking about the student loan mm -hmm. that uh, has been uh, you know, postponed to a later date yet to be announced by the federal government. But there are other things that Nigerians are talking about this morning. And we're starting with um, no ransom will be paid. Right. Nigerians are reacting to that naturally. And the first one is from Badmos. Badmos Uthman says, Tinubu is the type of president Nigeria needs. We won't negotiate with any terrorists. They will release those children when they feel the heat. Question is, how See, long? Big question. Yeah. Kelvin underscore OJ says, no dime shall be paid. Pain will make it a lucrative business. The police should up their game to modern technology of tracking criminals. Western countries are using it. Nigerian police and military should develop their technology surveillance and stop doing it the old way. Mm. The locus in quo says two things m must give way. Ransom or a rescue. If you can't achieve the latter, then you must give way for the former. The captives can't be there forever. Right, and you see, Emmy himself, it's a big topic. I know it's been a major debate, but see what Emmy himself says, that paying them to release the children will only bring more harm to us. The military, police, NSCDC, and DSS should rescue them. Yeah, I H, think, yeah go ahead. I, I think it's also been said how this, of course, is also a ploy, some gimmick by the terrorists, bandits, whatever you want to call them, to have the children or the captives as human cover. So essentially, it will be tough for uh, you know, security forces to fire at them at will and the rest. But this is government stance. Children are still in captivity. You have parents who are worried. I mean, that's a parent's worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. Every day that the children remain with those uh, their captors yeah. is agony for the parents. You know, but we've been talking about this uh, forever. You know, for for a long time during the last administration, they use them as human shields. When will our military be competent enough to be able to overcome that with strategy and rescue and arrest? Uh, speaks to funding, it speaks to training, and the rest, because you will hear that we have one of the best military in the world. But well, there you go. This one is from Zuberu Copycat, and they say, while we all share the deep concern for the safety of our abducted children, it's imperative that we find solutions that do not involve funding the criminals behind these heinous acts. We must prioritize proactive measures to prevent such abductions subsequently. Well, Mr. Underscore Francis 55 has a different opinion and uh, just to bring this to you says well it's too early to make this comment because the life of the children are involved even if that's the right step to take so a lot of Nigeria says, I agree with you on this one, while well, agreeing with the president, the federal government, if you have a swift rescue team, normally a serious government shouldn't negotiate with terrorists, but that's the proviso, if you have a swift rescue team. So My let us know what you think about this, hashtag CTV Morning Brief, you can just tag us at CTV Morning Brief uh, on social media. Let's now go to yet another major topic uh, that has gotten you talking, and that's the student's loan. Well, today was meant to be the day for the launch, but that's not happening. Uh, anymore, at least as of today. Nail Fund put out a statement saying well, they need to essentially harmonize the stakeholders that they are ready uh, as a Nigeria Education Loan Fund. They, they are ready, but they will need to harmonize stakeholders together. But a lot of people thought this is not the first time we heard of postponement, not the second. And now this time again. So you see this one from Olua on X as well saying that the Nigeria I'm seeing now doesn't need student loan scheme. They need to leave education subsidized at the federal and state level. The sudden hike in tuition doesn't make sense. Not in a place like Nigeria for now. Well, uh, do, do Abiz Media and G seems to agree with the federal government for whatever reason? And he says, good move by Mr. President. Nigeria can't afford to roll out the student loan right now, knowing full well that the current economic reality of our country. I uh, remember the president saying it must, uh, as a matter of urgency, happen. I think it was by the beginning of this year. Uh, finally, let's take this one uh, from I'm Kazo saying, 
By prioritizing fuel subsidy removal over addressing student loan availability, the FG risks widening the gap in access to education and hindering social economic development. But this decision reflects a lack of foresight and neglect of the long-term benefits of investing in education, uh, he says there. So lots of thoughts around this one, and it's important to get insights into what exactly is going on. Remember, Nail Fund said that they're going to try to harmonize the stakeholders. One of the major stakeholders, naturally, the recipients or potential recipients of the loans, and those are the students. So this morning, we'll be having a conversation with, of course, the National Association of Nigerian Students, that's NANS, to get a sense of what is it they know about this, how far they've been carried along, and what what is next, particularly with the school fees hike that looks like it's not coming down? As you can see, we have uh, Lucky Emunefe, who's the national president of NANS, joining us from our Abuja studio this morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Emunefe. It's good to have you on the morning brief. Mr. Emunefe, good morning, and welcome to the morning brief. Good morning. Right, Very so to meet you. I just want to get your first impression uh, about this suspension of the student loans. I imagine you were preparing for today, perhaps to attend the event and then start encouraging students to enroll for this, particularly indigent students. But now that it has been suspended, you are a major stakeholder. So I imagine you've been carried along every step of the way. What can you tell us about this hold on the student loan scheme? Okay, I think uh, these. Uh, Let's go ahead, Mr. Monife. Student loan initiative, and those who initiated it, and uh, those who implemented it is a good initiative, is highly commendable. I think uh, the facilitator of that bill and uh, Mr. President's commitment to ensuring that uh, this is actually implemented. We as Nigeria students, we commend the effort. It's a good development. Uh, talking about the postponement and the shifting of the dates, uh, we, I think we are okay with it too, because uh, even during our visit to Mr. President, there are certain things that need to be put in place. And this is the reason for the postponement. And we as Nigeria students, we are in line with that because you can remember vividly that uh, there was an extension in the student loan, including the vocational training and having vocational skill inclusion in the student loan. And there are some certain adjustments that needed to be done towards the student loan. Uh, we don't want a situation whereby hurriedly launch it, the app is at, student can't access it, and there are some certain rigidity in the process. So even we as to want it to be properly done, it is even better it is properly done than it is hurriedly done. So I think we as student representative, uh, we want it to, we want every criteria to be put in place, every necessary step should be put in place, and it should be all encompasses, uh, because I could remember vividly when we visited Mr. President, we presented some challenges, some rigidity in assessing it. I think they are working on those areas. Can you elaborate a bit more on uh, those areas, those things that need to be put in place? And uh, how long do you think the federal government requires uh, to ensure that those gray areas are tidied up before the takeoff? Okay, uh, I think uh, when we visited Mr. President, we talked about uh, the criteria for assessing the loan. Uh, because the intention of this loan is having students to assess it, those who can afford these education uh, uh, fees and uh, uh, charges in, during the course of the educational pursuit will have access the children of the common people can have access to education. Why doing that? These access must be open to everybody. 
But you look at those criteria initially put there was, there are stringent conditions such as having level 12 uh, civil servants, a lawyer that has served for 10 years, I think, uh, or someone in the Ministry of Justice. There are other conditions that are there. Now you can discover that, and even your parents will earn close to about 500, at least 500,000 per annum. And uh, we discovered, we pleaded, that not all Nigerian students can be able to meet up these conditions. So we want a situation whereby it is free for genuine Nigeria students who can't afford it, not giving them strict condi conditions. So we pleaded. I think we visited Mr. President, our Nigeria student pleaded, of course, the conditions should come down so that students can assess it because the purpose of the loan is assessing it and having access to education. Because Mr. President told us that uh, he want all Nigeria students who wants to learn to have access to education. So those conditions, I think they are working on them as well. Then I think there is one silent issue about, the, we said it's all about student loan. And you know, even the app, the conditions and the student need to give in proper orientations. And we are the one to do the proper orientation to our students who want to access this loan. This is how to go about it. This is when to do it. This conditions that are easy for, like on our path as students, we want a situation where if you are a Nigerian student, you have your NIM, you have your BVN, and you have your admission letter, mm. of course, you should have access to this stuff. This is our position. So, so we want a situation where by all students who are in tertiary institutions have access to it. So these things are the areas I think they are putting in place to ensure that, yes, this is done proper. And we want to give our student proper orientation. We don't want a situation whereby in our institutions, here we have, for instance, 1,000 students, only 10 students assess it. Right. It's not the purpose of Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Monifé, let me just come in here and, and ask, so does that explain why it's been postponed not once? I mean, we had thought this was going to take off last year with the feelers we had. The president had said, you know, it should take off early this year. It, it must take off. And, you know, he gave that directive. And so for a lot of people, they're thinking, well, this is another promise and fail. I mean, you promised us this thing and it is not happening. And they've literally lost hope in this. So I don't know how confident you are, if you can vouch, uh, that government is really going to make this happen as soon as possible. I don't imagine that these gray areas will take a long time to resolve, really. Uh, it, can, it can take uh, just perhaps days. So speak to us. Do you trust the government to follow through with this and institute the student's loan scheme as soon as possible? Uh, uh, to be honest with you, we, we've met with Mr. President, we made our complaint before him, we've seen his commitment as well, and he has a genuine commitment towards ensuring the implementation of the student loan. I think uh, the only areas we, we want to state here is that we want our students to be properly educated, we are confident that it will work. We are very confident. After listening to Mr. President, it is even left for Mr. President. Mr. President wants it to be done today because we are all prepared for the launching of the app today. Uh, it is left for Mr. President. Wants it to kiss up, but wants it to be properly. Those giving the responsibility wants it to be properly done. Our students need to be oriented. We don't want a situation whereby it, we rush it and we couldn't achieve success towards it. So on our part, we, are, we agree with the prospect, but I'm very confident that uh, it won't take even up to three weeks. There are little amendments that need to be done since there is inclusion of those vocational training and the rest of you. I'm very confident that in the shortest period of time, we are going to kickstart it and uh, things will work well for Nigeria today and we'll, we'll do our sensitization even in various, during my campus tour I'll be giving orientation, giving assurance to Nigeria students, of course, that they will assess it. Because I, I, recently, we, are, uh, we have a situation whereby students, they have issue of incremental school fees. Some of them even want to commit suicide. We have a, a, a female student from the University of Abuja who's supposed to 
have access who, who his school fees was about to 70 something thousand was increased to 195,000. Get what I'm saying? So right. I think with the commencement of this student loan, we'll be able to sort out these issues. Because the concern for a lot of people is also the fact that the fees have gone up and the student loan hasn't come to cushion the effect just yet. So they are having to pay out of pocket. So those same indigent people that the president says he wants to go to school, I wonder how they're getting by now with inflation, with cost of food items and the rest. So are you also appealing to schools to bring down their fees for now, pending when the student loan comes in quickly? Okay, I think uh, well, one of our requests before Mr. President is the hard conditions that Nigeria students are passing through. The cost of living increments by management of school fees. And we presented that issue, and uh, the Minister of Education, we had a section with all vice chancellor, all provost, all rector, and I think uh, on the issue of increment in school fees, we have a uh, place pendiment on it, because you know, Mr. President, we, we brought that issue that Mr. President said, there shouldn't be further increment in school fees. So we are monitoring activities that were getting reports that any increment in school fees of any higher institution, of course, as a representative of Nigeria student, we are going to wave in and ensure that things are reversed immediately because it is our responsibility to speak for the interest of our students, the welfare of our students, and to ensure that, yes, our students' interest is highly protected. All right, we'd like but to thank you so much. I can assure you that those era of increment in school fees is, will be the thing of the past because we are monitoring closely the activities of this management. Right. We'd like to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Loki Monefe, who's national president of NANS. Although we've had some people asking, are you really a student? At what level are you? Is it um, undergraduate or postgraduate? I know you've heard that question a lot. Yeah, no, a student, you cannot be a president of Nigeria student. I'm a student, of course. I'm an undergraduate student. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Lockyer Monife, National President Nance. Thank you for your time. We wish you the very best. And of course, we'll be uh, following up with the developments to ensure that this is followed through with. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I wonder whether universities are complying with the directive not to increase um, fees until, you know, things stabilize. But let's go to other themes this morning. And you're still talking, and this time around you're talking about the federal government's decision to open land and air borders with the Republic of Niger. Interesting one there. Uh, maybe we'll just take two. Uh, this one is from Ayo Last Born. This is the best decision so far now. I'm very sure price of rice is going to be reduced, I believe, fully with the help of Seme border. Well, but not Seme border now, Niger border. Exactly. So, <laughs> well, that's much we can take. There's so much more we have for you on the show. Don't forget, keep sending in those comments, questions. If you've got videos as well for us, send them in. We'll go on a quick one now. When we return, we'll turn our attention to yet another major issue. That's in a moment. We'll stay with us.